Oh, wait, mate. Okay, so good morning, Martin, and uh, absolutely lovely to talk to you again. Uh, I have to say, without blowing smoke, thanks, first of all, for giving the most incredible five years of my, my Celtic support in life. Uh, absolutely unforgettable roller coaster. So many, many more highs than lows. So I've got to ask you if you could, a really difficult question perhaps, if you could pick just one moment from that time here as a personal highlight, uh, what would that be and, and, and perhaps why? Right, okay. Perhaps that maybe the day that we won the league in the in the um, in the first season, perhaps, and maybe that obviously was preceded by us winning uh, against Rangers six two. That might have turned the tide for us. Yeah. So if you're talking about maybe a seminal moment, uh, perhaps and I, I I didn't think of that at the time. I was delighted to win the game, and in the manner in which we did. But the first old firm game. The atmosphere was just unbelievable, really. And it's something that even I, for all the sort of experiences that I had, both as a player and as a manager, that this was a, this was another high. And um, so perhaps maybe maybe the winning of the league, which was terrific, and that's also uh, that's the ultimate in, in, in the sense of you, to, you actually have an achievement and, you, you, and it's the end of a thing, culmination of things. But perhaps maybe going back, maybe uh, the 6-2 victory over Rangers, which give us... Hope and heart, not only to the players but obviously to the to the fans. Yeah, I mean that, that was a incredible day. I just remember, I think they came out they came out of the traps in the first twenty minutes and blew them yeah. off the park. And I remember you talking about the benchmark beforehand. And it felt like within about twenty minutes the the, the world had changed. So an, mm -hmm. an incredible time, as I say. So brilliant. Chris Sutton scoring the, the first minute, and then Stan Petrov and Lambert scoring. So many wonderful players in that team. I'm not even talking about the kind of things, but. Maybe a, a sort of left field question for you. Of, of all the, of all the, you know, so many wonderful players there. But was there ever a player that you really in that era that you really regretted not being able to bring to Celtic? I'm always curious to know who else. You know, yeah, I, I, I've been asked. Yeah, I've been asked that question a number of times, and I suppose, uh, listen, there there are players that, that you'd love to have signed that you just knew would be impossible to do. So you I mean every every club has, has that, perhaps maybe with the exceptions of a, a few in the Premier League at the moment. So um, and I never really I never really tried to go outside a sort of a budget that I had. Of course, at the time when. If you think that we we spent um, I spent six millions on uh, six million pounds on, on Chris Sutton, but we got that money for Mark Viduka because Viduka had gone to Leeds United. So it was yeah. really kind of a turnover. And uh, and I actually think that um, Sutton arriving at the football club was just uh, a, a landscape changer for us at that time, because had he not been in there, you know, Henrik was recovering from from injury at the time. I know he had played for Sweden in the in the Euros, but even so, he needed a partner with him. And if Sutton had not arrived, perhaps we might, might not have won those early games. So, but getting back to your point, there was talk of, way back about Rivaldo, us uh, trying to sign Rivaldo at one stage or another. And and I definitely got to to a, a moment or two, I think through the agent, I think the, the, the agent was progressing it. Uh, I probably wasn't sure because maybe at that time, Rivaldo was probably the same age as me. So... Um, <laughs> So I think that then that there might have been a difficulty. Rivaldo at his very, very best would absolutely have been fantastic. And it's interesting you should mention this because I did sign or I took on. He was getting a free transfer from Middlesbrough, but Juninho and Juninho, Juninho in nine, when I was manager of Leicester City in 1996, 97, 97, 98, there's no question that Juninho was the best attacking midfield player in the Premier League. He was absolutely yeah. brilliant. Then he goes to um, Atletico Madrid. But yeah. by the time that we had picked him up, you know, he was well and truly past his best and, and wasn't really capable of shining in the manner which he'd done. So perhaps maybe Rivaldo might have been the same story. But I know that um, uh, there, there wouldn't be too many people that I would have regretted only because we were with we're, we were working within a budget. You know, it's great that you mentioned uh, Janino because in, in all my years of supporting Celtic, it's probably the it's probably the one transfer I could never quite understand why it didn't work out because he seemed absolutely tailor made for Celtic, a Brazilian World Cup player who knew who, you know who knew British football if you like, mm -hmm. so the climate and he played in Middlesbrough, so the climate. And I remember his, his debut against Rangers; it was sensational. But, uh -huh. uh, for whatever reason, I, maybe just a, a bridge too far. That was a real regret of mine that he didn't. I, I, he didn't I, make I, that I, leap. And mine as well, to believe it or not. And perhaps maybe we uh, uh, 
I, I think honestly that that uh, Juninho was stepping into something that he felt, you know, I, I, I'll deal with this very, very easily, and he wasn't able to deal with it very easily. And perhaps maybe we had a we had a, a difference of opinion on on certain things as well. I remember we played a game against uh, AC Milan in the Champions League in Milan. And uh, we were obviously under pressure for a little while, but Janina was picking the ball up outside his own penalty area, uh, or her penalty area, and then starting to run with it and, and losing it two or three times. And I thought, oh, we've been, hold on, just steady on, Janina. You're, you're not 1997, 98. You know, just uh, you're losing it and putting us under a better pressure. But then we got a we got a free kick. We got a free kick to alleviate a bit of pressure, believe it or not, in the game. And remember, this is in, in, in Milan. And uh, Juninho, with the, the lads, the lads were just taking a breath just for a second or two. Again, it was just outside our penalty area, and uh, but Juninho took a quick free kick, a quick one to get the ball back. And one of our players, I think it might have been Neil Lennon, I don't remember this here, wasn't actually expecting it. And so Juninho, Juninho's pass to get it back again went straight to the Brazilian player, or sorry, went straight to the uh, Milan player who yeah. fires this shot at goal. So we had. Uh, I, I had a word or two with him at half time, which he wasn't widely happy about. But there we go. Uh, but it, it, uh, so, it, did, uh, it didn't it didn't materialize. But um, but it was a free transfer, and maybe I was expecting a wee bit too much at that stage when I probably realised that he he it wasn't going to work. Uh, uh, superb insight. Thanks. Thanks for that. Uh, I guess talking maybe briefly on in less happy times. I also remember the, the Scottish Cup final of, of two thousand five. Probably the most surreal experience ever that we won the trophy and everybody's grown hearted and that was particularly because A, we were, uh, you know, we were losing yourself after after mm -hmm. such a, a glorious era. I think more particularly because we were worried uh, about personally on your behalf for things that was going on in your family. Mm -hmm. Maybe an unfair question, but I'll ask it anyway. It's always been my belief that you were involved in the, I guess, selection of Gordon Strachan as the man to come in. Is that accurate? In a position to say if that's right? And if so, you know, you know what did you believe was was the the attributes the, that God would bring no to no the the answer is no I I didn't I I I um I uh, knew that Dermot no that was that was entirely Dermot's decision okay. and I but I did meet up with Gordon and Dermot Dermot Desmond in in uh, in Dermot's house down in London just to talk through you know my uh, my own experiences of the particular players that he was going to to meet up with, but no, okay. that's no, it's it okay. wasn't true. I didn't, I didn't have a say in that there, and and then, in all honesty, I don't, I don't think that, I don't think that I wanted to. If 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 Dermot had asked me my my opinion, that's a different issue. But I didn't yeah. didn't wasn't really going to poke my nose into something that really. Um, if you start recommending somebody and then after three or four months it's not working out, well, uh, you know, it's it's not, <laughs> the, not the best feeling in the world. But Gordon was uh, Gordon was an excellent choice. No, and that would have been that was Dermot's choice entirely on his own. Okay, uh, maybe ask this a slightly different question. Then, what, what, how did you feel Gordon actually got on in that uh, you know that, that period after he took over? What was your over looking back? What was your overriding? I guess that's uh, yeah. I, I actually absolutely did really, really fine, did really fine because um, uh, in fact, I inherited some really decent players as well too, and I, I, yeah. and uh, and they had been used to to winning. But even so, it, it, stepping in there, having to do that, uh, and uh, and uh, and turning things around because early days weren't maybe not so good. So that 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 was great. And his exploits in European football, qualifying for the second stages, you know, the group stages that we. Yes. Maybe should have done at least at least on two occasions. Yeah. Uh, the very first time when we picked up nine points, but we didn't go yes. through, and uh, and the second time when um, when Baldy handles the ball against Leon in the last minute of the game and gives away a penalty or whatever it was, and um, so but no, Gordon's Gordon's uh, tenure at at uh, Celtic was excellent. So again, moving to your time after after you left Celtic, it was quite poignant for me that one of the, I guess, I think your first sign, maybe right in saying that, was uh, Stan Petrov, mm -hmm. uh, who obviously had his own health concerns later on. I know you always took Chris Sutton, who I've enjoyed some of the appearances you've had for you and, and, and Chris of some brilliant ban banter. But also Sean Maloney came here. It's maybe a, I'm maybe stating the bleeding obvious, but what, what was it about these guys, I guess, that, that, that made you feel they would adapt to the, the apps, not just English football, but the top flight? I think the okay. Aston Villa were flying at that time. Yeah. Right. Okay. So what happened is that I went to I went to Aston Villa 
uh, two two weeks before the season started. So I'm really relying on the players that were at the football club. And there's going to be a change of ownership as well, too. So uh, uh, Doug Ellis is going to be leaving the football club and Randy Lerner, the American owner, is going to take over. So Randy really was the one that um, that uh, said to me that we we could afford to to spend the money and uh, take Stillian on. Now, get Stillian was um, was you know, he was going to be an excellent player because I knew everything about him, as I did with Sean. So Stillian came in, uh, our first signing really there. Uh, his debut is one of the great debuts, I probably the best debut I've ever seen of a player, in, uh, certainly, um, against West Ham, where he was absolutely fantastic. He then unfortunately hit a, uh, not immediately, but he hit a, a top four period where he had a, a big, big fight in his hand to stay in the side. But he came through that there with flying colours when even I, I kind of lost a little bit of a little bit of I say confidence rather than faith because I knew what he was able to do and still he end up becoming a terrific footballer uh, for for Aston Villa as you say had his own health problems um, and thankfully he's battled through that. But with Sean, Sean came in in January time, and by which time now I'd, I I had a, a rough idea about the uh, about the. Uh, the Premier League again, you know, and 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 uh, and I thought that Sean's ability to pick the ball up just outside the penalty area, the, the little step over that he's able to do, and uh, and cause havoc in and around the penalty area. Now, and Sean became homesick rather quickly, and I think probably n never really settled. But he be, in one particular game where he was absolutely fantastic against Chelsea at Stamford Bridge. I think we drew four yeah. four, but. Excellent, really, really excellent. And um, so, if he had maybe, maybe it settled. Maybe he found it a wee bit more difficult than than he should have done with all the talent that he possessed. But I think that Gordon took him back again and again. So and did really fine. So uh, Sean, Sean had a, a an excellent career, and I knew Sean from very early days. Anyway, getting back to Chris Sutton, Chris was having, I think, I think Chris was having a tough time with Gordon up there, and I thought, well. I pulled him out of the quagmire at Chelsea way back years <laughs> before. So I thought to myself uh, that I, I'll do the same again. I'll take him. And I, he, he makes the quote, I don't remember saying this, but he does say apparently in, in uh, some of his, his talks about it, he said uh, he said that uh, I phoned him up and said, Chris, would you fancy coming down here? And I said, because we're, re we're really, really poor, you know. So, <laughs> so uh, and it was a tough old year, the first year for Aston Villa. But when we got their act together, we finished uh, top six in three consecutive seasons again and were vying for the top four in two of those years. So, But Chris hurt his eye very, very quickly and retired. Um, I'm, I, you know, I, I've often I've often wondered just how bad his eyesight is at times, you know, when he is uh, doing some sort of punditry work. But maybe that maybe that's had an effect on him throughout all these years. I mean, I better try and avoid getting in the middle of that one. Uh, yeah. I don't think I'd do too well there, OK? Sort of last couple of questions, if you don't mind, for you. One, talking about so many magical players to bring back so, lovely memories, but, but, but one guy, one of my heroes in that immediate period, I guess, post-Martin O'Neill at Celtic with Shinsuke Nakamura, I've always thought he'd have been a, an incredible addition uh, to your team. So I'm, I'm not quite sure... Uh, who, who would make way for him? And please don't suggest any of these names right away. But I, I've got to ask, was he ever in your radar at Celtic? I, had, I wasn't aware of him before that Confederations Cup in, in, in Germany. Was he ever in your radar at Celtic? And is he someone who you both rate and would feel would have fitted in with your style of play, Martin? Oh, uh, uh, the answer, first of all, is no. He, he wasn't on the radar. I didn't know anything, anything about him. And two, absolutely. He kind of, in many aspects, he was he was like a latter day Lubo Moravchik was, you know, in many in many aspects. I know there, there was differences, and uh, um, I mean, I I, um, I had Lubo. Uh, uh, Lubo was, you know, I think about thirty five years of age at the time, and obviously wasn't able to complete as the number of games that he thought he could he could do or that was my opinion anyway Lubo was a different opinion as, <laughs> as, as players do but in many aspects yeah Nakamura kind of reminded me of Lubo no Lubo's the best two-footed player I have ever ever worked with uh, I'm an absolute magician you know and uh, and only behind Henrik in popularity really for yeah, from, yeah. from from the Celtic fans I would love to have had Lubo when he was 26 or 27 and I genuinely believe that a 26 or 27 year old Lubo Moravchik would probably have won the um 
the um, the um, uh, what do you call it the uh, trophy at um, at the U UEFA Cup at uh, in Seville. I honestly think you would have done that. Of course, cool, yeah. So. yeah. Uh, uh, well, absolutely, great. the gift from God. That was uh, that that was that was perfectly phrased. Okay, just yeah. maybe a wee cheeky one for you, Martin. But uh, just just to finish up here, always you see, you still seem very close. And it's like you, you talked about affection for Henrik and for Lugo. There's huge affection for you. Is there ever a real? What's the possibility of you come back to Celtic in some sort of role as a manager, or director of football, or whatever? That's something that appeals. I, to, it might um, happen. Right. Okay. Well, first of all, there's a couple of things to that. Number one, no. I uh, the the really short answer to it is that I wouldn't be asked back. I know that Dermot would <laughs> wouldn't ask me back. You know, I think he feels as if that uh, the torch has passed. Um, if there's some in some aspect that I could go and help and help Celtic in some sort of a, a way, yes. If um, if the um, if the present manager says that, listen, here we need a, a very very good scout living down in southern Italy uh, for most of the year, uh, only has to go to one game per uh, per week, and for the rest of the time just sitting sitting down there uh, resting. I think that 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 would be a that would be a super super job that, but um, and also that's not going to happen either. So the, my days at Celtic, I loved absolutely loved and um, and uh, and at a time of my at a time well time of my uh, my wife's life as well too. So and um, it was uh, I, certainly you know I, I've often said jokingly that my wife doesn't like any place that you know she'll she'll find it difficult anywhere, but she absolutely adored Glasgow. So we had a, we had the time of our lives at, at Glasgow, and it was fantastic. But uh, as for uh, um, those other things that you just asked about, there I would have said that they're they're more unlikely to happen than likely to happen. Let me put it this way. Well, Martin, well, you talked about time in your life. I just finished off with thanking you because absolutely, you gave me and my kids the time of our lives at that time at Celtic. I will never be repeated, in my opinion. Thanks a million, and take no, care. That's no, lot, thank you very much indeed. That's really nice of you. Thank you very much. Bye -bye. Really appreciate it. Cheers, Matt. Okay. Thanks, Matt. Jake, you got it? Yeah. Just leave. Does this leave now, Jake? Yeah.